Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die 1.0, The Survival Guide. In this episode, we're going to be finishing up the quest tier 1 here because we want to get the reward for that. We want to get the access to the next level of quests, which is going to be really good because the loot in tier 2s is actually like, mm, you know, I kind of want that rather than just leaving it behind. And we'll get a little bit of a lump sum of dukes, which will be nice. If you're playing along at home following this series and you're behind, don't worry about that too much. The timings are not incredibly precise. All you need to do is basically do the things I'm doing at your own pace. And of course, near Horde Night, prepare for Horde Night with the episodes I make about preparing for Horde Night. Otherwise, if you're two days behind me, don't worry about it. Just get better at the game as you go and you'll be able to do it faster than even I've done here. I'm actually behind because I spend a lot of time talking. If I play this game, god forbid, for fun, <sighs> you know, if you're impressed by my gameplay when I'm actually doing videos, you would be very impressed by what I do when I'm not trying to talk to you at the same time. Um, but that sounds horrible. <laughs> well, it sounds like a wandering horde just arrived. Or maybe it's just some zombies. A wandering horde basically has a chance of spawning I think it's every 12 hours, but you'll usually see them once a day. It's a little cluster of like six to eight zombies. They'll run generally towards you and try and attack you, but they're not like blood moon hordes or anything. They do abide by the laws of every other zombie. So you can outrun them. You can sneak away from them. You don't have to fight them, but they do actually have a bonus to dropping loot bags, which might be of value to you. I would rather spend my time doing quests. So what have you got? You've got, ah, I'm going to have to do a buried supplies today. That's going to suck. He's got three clears and a buried supply. So let's get the closest one done first. And we need to be fast about it because that is a lot of questing to get done in one day. But we arrived early in the day at least, so that is nice. I might be cutting it close by the end of the day though, I doubt I'm going to have time to go and see Jen today, but hey, I might surprise myself, maybe these POIs will be really easy. If you're playing along at home by the way and you want less challenging quests, buried supplies are that if you're playing on low difficulties, because you basically have to fight like four or five zombies and stand in a spot and dig some clay. However, on higher difficulties and more importantly, higher run speeds, that becomes a lot harder because the zombies will swarm you as you're underground. So you have to put in some real infrastructure to help you do those safely on high difficulties and run speeds. I will be fine. I just prefer not to do them because I find digging to be incredibly annoying. Also, I have a skill point, so let's talk about those really quickly. At this point in my playthrough, I have to make a very important decision, which is whether or not I want to ruin my loot tables for a couple of weeks to be able to mine. And basically what I mean by that is as you put points in Miner 69er, you will increase the amount of harvesting tool magazines you find in loot. And why is that a problem? Well, uniquely to the harvesting tools and a few other magazines here is they all have a very high concentration in a certain kind of loot. And if you boost one, the others will be accidentally reduced in frequency. So if you take a bunch of points in Miner 69er, you're going to be finding these harvesting tool books in the same containers you would also find repair tools, salvage tools, electrician, traps, workstations, and vehicles, and uh, robotics. And that's six books that all share the same loot tables, which can make this really, really annoying. I am going to min-max my books, and I'll show you how to do that, but basically what you want to do is, unless you urgently need something better from these books, don't actually read them when you find them. There is an item in the game called the Nerd Outfit, and this has a chance to give you double skill points when reading those magazines. So you read one forge ahead and you get two points of workstations. At level six, the Nerd Outfit gives you a 58% chance to get double skill points, which means you can easily hit level 100 in a skill book by finding 60 or 70 of them. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but it really does save a lot of time when you're trying to max out like 10 of these skills at the same time. So we are going to do that. And the way to get a level six nerd armor, other than just really good loot, is you need to be able to make level six heavy armor, which requires armor 
maxed out basically 100 and armorer is actually boosted by the attribute points you put in so the more points you put in your attributes like strength agility intellect whatever the more of those armor books you're going to find so when we find armor books we're just going to eat those to get to level 6 nerd armor as soon as possible because we can't do the level 6 nerd armor thing to unlock the level 6 nerd armor can we no we could do it a little bit min maxly by getting level 1 nerd armor and sort of going from there on each tier but it's not really that worthwhile we'll just find a hundred of them very quickly because that's how they are all that to say i'm putting a point in minor 69er and it's going to completely ruin my loot but we're going to do some magic to make this a lot more bearable but with clubs where is it i'm going to keep reading these until at least level three baseball bats and then i will consider getting like a little bit of nerdy armor before reading them because i, I just need a better weapon than a level five club so we wasted two in-game hours saying that, but that's what I'm talking about when I say I could do this a lot faster if I wasn't making a YouTube video. It's just part of the process. I could pause the game, but then you're completely just staring at nothing. He is going a very weird direction. Get sneak attack on you. Oh, there's like four of you in here. Let's get sneak attack on you. Trapped on that door, please. And you can get smacked there. What did I just pick up? Oh, I pulled an arrow out of him. There we go. That went well. I'm not going to do very thorough looting because I want to get through these quickly. There's an armored up and the big hitters. We'll read both of those. Uh, but I will loot the important loot containers bunch of glue in those chemistry stations that's nice you can see even on insane difficulty by day three we're pretty comfortably able to beat the zombies with a wooden club if you invest your skill points right so that's oh we're done that's weird we had to go into a certain room to make it end the quest anyway so that's why i play on insane difficulty because yes it's really really grindy on the first couple of days but once you get a few points you really aren't at that much of a disadvantage to have to hit a zombie four times to kill them you know so it's just part of the difficulty for me there's another big hitters let's eat this cat food you unlocked wooden clubs at quality six ah that's a good time to tell you about level six items so i cannot craft a level 6 wooden club because every level 6 item in the game requires a fairly rare part called a legendary part and those are found in mostly clothing containers and end game loot containers as well as being rewards for tier 6 quests pretty much every tier 6 quest will give you a legendary part i think as all the tier 6s i've ever done have given me a legendary part but i'm not sure if it is literally 100 percent i imagine it is usually you don't want to waste a legendary part on like a level 6 wooden club because in two books you're gonna get a level 1 baseball bat and a level 1 baseball bat is better than a level 6 club most of the time unless you get a really bad roll so it's just a waste of a legendary part and that legendary part is much more valuable to you as something you use to craft a level six shotgun than a level six wooden club for example so if i had one i wouldn't craft a level six wooden club right now <laughs> i'd recommend only really using it on your armor and like the final gun tier that you want to use in melee weapons so like a steel club an auto shotgun that kind of thing well give me those pipe bombs or do i want uh, I will take the magazine bundle, but the pipe bombs are more fun. I can loot that shelf bag. Has that always been a thing? Anyway, I was trying to talk to you there. Give me another clear. Open this up. Two armored up. Two big hitters. Great. We can make primitive armor at quality six. Again, I wouldn't recommend it. Now, it might be worth making level five primitive armor, but it will cost you a couple of duct tape and some cloth. So I will keep an eye out for those things. But really, I'm going to start getting level one light armors pretty soon which are going to have more or less the same damage resistance as the level six primitive stuff and they'll give me cool little effects so i'll probably just wait for those to spawn 
rather than wasting all that cloth and duct tape. And I might even find level 1 heavy armor, which gives you something like 18% damage resistance per piece. If you get 4 level 1 heavy armor pieces, you're extremely tanky, and since I have adrenaline rush, there's no real reason for me to not use heavy armor if I want damage resistance. It just makes sense. Start this quest, that'll respawn this and maybe give me a forge head. It did. And let's also check the mailbox again. Just paper and this. Another forge head. Great. Forge heads I might read up until the, uh, the workbench level because I might need a workbench very soon. But anything above that, I'm just going to wait. Oh, she got smacked. Fortunately, this is a very short clear, so this will help with the time that I'm wasting. Give me an engine, please. Oh. Another thing I would read if I found it is salvage operations, because being able to craft a level 1 wrench would be very useful for me right now. Hey, there's those loot bags I was talking about. Zombies have a chance to give you stuff. Pistol Pete Volume 6. This is a unique skill book which will give you the ability to craft armor piercing 9mm ammo, which is pretty nice, but it's not going to be too helpful for me on day 3. The mechanical part, or what are they called again? Motor tool parts. Let's grab that. I need to remember to ignore my instincts to just eat every book I find. The Nerd Armor is a recent addition to 7 Days to Die, so I have some real book eating muscle memory, if you will. And I need to resist. Easy peasy. Even on insane difficulty. See, it's not it's not that bad. Yet. It gets pretty bad in the end game. But you should have the stuff to deal with it in the end game, so. <laughs> still, if you're watching at home, I would still recommend you just play on Warrior. I play on insane mostly because I won't have fun if I'm not challenged, and also because I will endlessly get comments of Yeah, but I bet you couldn't do it on insane difficulty do literally everything on Insane Nightmare. I've done it like four times on like four separate series. You smug bastards. Oh, that was a lucky headbutt. Let me stab him in the head. Hey, get back over here. There we go. We got a skill point. Since we've opened the Pandora's box of Miner 69er, which I forgot to actually tell you what it does, it increases the block damage you do with your tools to make mining faster, and it makes you use less stamina when you're doing it, which makes it faster kind of in the long run. You won't have to take as many breathers. Grab the loot. So here's the first piece of armor here. We got Commando Gloves, which are medium armor. They give you a small mobility penalty of 5%, which won't affect me in combat, so I don't care. Uh, but I do get 13% damage resistance from those, which is 5% more than my current light armor, and I get a 5% range damage boost. Range damage isn't the craziest, most useful thing early on, because the only ranged thing I really have right now is my bow, and I, I do have my pistol and my... SM, no, not my SMG. Why do I always call it that? The pipe machine gun. But they're not really the kinds of weapons that are going to benefit from 5% more damage, are they? They are definitely more volume of fire weapons. The bow does kind of benefit, but 5% is not a lot. So it's mostly the armor for me, and they look cooler, but you're not going to really be able to tell. <laughs> oh, they look so different. I can really see, yeah, this is completely different from everything. Take more crafting skill magazine bundles. We get vehicle adventures, shotguns and tools. I'll just hold on to those. Let's take another clear. Let me buy a drink because my character is thirsty. I've gotten challenged for selling items to the trader. Let's redeem that. A little bit of XP and let's go do that quest. We're making good time for having to do clears and spending two hours explaining books. Here we are. New mailbox, let's search it. Spear Hunter, that is just a skill book, not a skill magazine, so there's no reason to not just eat those if you want them. Uh, let me read these two forge heads. We want to get up to 10 so I can make workbenches. Loads of meds in this room. Bandage. And a first aid bandage. Nice. Oh, a batter up book. Printing with a club drawn uses 20% less stamina. Oh, I found that one already. Did I not read it? 
weird. Bow hunters, which I'm just going to read because I don't care about getting more of those, and the same with sledgehammers. Like, if you don't want to level something up, just eat the book for a little bit of XP, and just in case you want to craft something later. If you really want to, you know, gather up books you're not going to really care about and try and min-max them, you can. I just don't care enough. Oh, that was a bad miss. Structural Brace Mod Schematic, I'll just eat that because I don't want to end up with too much extra inventory space taken up. Ooh, a Woodcutter Mod, that gives me extra damage to wood things with my axe. Uh, that thing there, by the way, was a flame trap. You just look for the pipes, you follow the pipes to these levers, you turn it off. If you go through the flames, you'll take a shitload of damage. Uh, it's not advisable to go through the flames if you can avoid it. We've got another batter up here. Blueberry pie, nice. And some knuckle wraps plus some 9 mil. I am going to have to go back to my base because these books are weighing me down. You see, I'm opening those crates much faster now. Ooh, an iron crossbow. That is a very good weapon, actually. The crossbow, compared to the bow, is much higher in damage, but it's much slower in reload. So it's an incredibly good stealth weapon because you can get this really high base damage and then you have a long reload time, but the idea is it won't matter if you're sneaking around and stuff. So I'm going to use that. Now, I've not used a crossbow in probably years. Do they take... They, they do take bolts, but are there stone bolts? There are. Let's start crafting those, and I'm going to get rid of my stone arrows, which is a complete waste. But if we're switching to the crossbow, I might as well. Yeah, that'll be a lot better for what I use my my bow for. If you've seen me using it, you'll see me, you know, shoot a zombie and then hit them with the club. This is just going to take the number of hits to kill them down, which is going to be really nice. I'll check my base and see if I've got any more feathers, because now we obviously have to supply myself with uh, even more bolts for this thing. I probably should have just kept the stone arrows, because if I find, like, a, a compound bow later, that would be better than an iron crossbow, but... It's not that big of a deal. One thing to note about the crossbow though is it is technically louder than the bow, so if you want absolute silence for your stealth weapon, then the bow is better, but the crossbow is much more likely to actually kill the thing you shoot it at, because it has much higher base damage. And that's true of the compound crossbow and bow as well. Alright, there's some feathers, let's make a bunch of stone crossbow bolts so we can actually use this. And let's go back to Trader Wrecked and get that final job. I think I have a level 2 stone shovel in here. Where did I hallucinate that as well? Not that that was a complete hallucination. Okay, let me take that blueberry pie. Let's go do that one job. Hey, Wrecked. Lost bum. Well, look here, I'll take boys. another crafting skill magazine bundle. Hero. And then we'll now, take the closer buried supplies. I'm not surprised. We open up this. We got two big hairs. And these other ones, I don't care about sharp six, but I'll hold on to the tools digest. What level of uh, club can I now make? Is it a level two baseball bat, I'm assuming? Level one still. I'm going to wait until I can make a level three to save resources, and then I'll hold on to the level three until I can make a steel club. Really quickly, because I know I have enough time to do this, I'm going to do this tier two POI to give the crossbow a test, and we'll get a little bit of extra loot. Unarmored up, nice. And it'll give me enough XP to level up, probably, which I could use to do the berry supplies a little bit easier, because I'll have another rank of minor 69er. Oh wow, we just killed her. We don't even need the, the club sometimes. We can just kill some of them. Ooh, a battery. Nice. Now, tier 2 PYs are bigger, they're harder, and they have better loot in them. So it is worth doing them if you can take them on. Same would be true of all the higher level POIs as well, though there's six in total. But you can only actually find a tier 5 POI. A tier 6 is a tier 5 with a quest modifier on it.
There's my XP that I wanted. Get minor 69 or 3. Or we could even get 4. We've got to have enough strength for that. I'm hungry. Let's eat the blueberry pie. It's a bit of a waste of health, but I'll live. My crossbow isn't loaded, and that's a really annoying common bug you'll get with bows in 7 Days Tonight. If that happens, what you want to do is hold R. This lets you choose your ammo. Choose an ammo type you don't have, and then switch back to the ammo type you do have, and then reload, and it'll do that. It's a real pain. Or you can fire your one arrow, but it will never hit because it's invisible and doesn't really exist, but it will cost you the ammo. So my advice would be to use the, the holding R thing. Uh, if you're on console, it'll be holding whatever your reload key is. Or button. This crossbow was a great find. Here we go, see it does it again. I think it happens when you try and load it too soon after switching to it. It's a, It's been in the game at least since Alpha 19. Because I remember it when I first like came back to the game in Alpha 19. So probably isn't going to be fixed anytime soon. Oh, there was a guy behind me. Of course there was. Right, so this room here is the end loop. You know that because when you go above here, you can fall into the room. I would always advise if there is an opportunity for you to not fall down into a locked room, you should take it. But the way you're supposed to do this is go up here and fight these guys. Oh, there's two more of you. That's fun. Fall down. Oh, you're going to be so tanky. That's annoying. Come on, give me a head pop. As I was saying, let's go back up in there. Flamethrowers, follow the pipes. There we go, they're turned off. And yeah, this is the hole. I would advise not dropping down into holes if you don't have to, because you'll get locked in a room with a bunch of zombies and it'll hurt. Especially if you don't know where like the secret key is or whatever. Break down the door. And do it this way. Hello, biker. See, you don't want to be trapped in there with one of them. Oh, bullshit on that hit. May even have to take two of them. Motherfucker does so much damage. No, oh, he fell through the floor. That's not good. There we go, he figured it out. He's in rage mode, he's going faster than usual now. I hate bikers. There we go. Fucking absolute bullet sponges. Ah, that was a lucky head pop as well. Cool. Here's some tier 2 loot. Art of Mining take 50% less damage from collapsing mines. Not good on its own, but the completion bonus for this, if you find all 7 volumes, is really good. You get a free rank, basically, of Mother Load. In addition to all the ranks of Mother Load that you might have. Um, I got some iron crossbow bolts there. Let's switch those. So now my crossbow's even better. Wonderful. And then let's smack open these. With my minor 69 or so high, it's not that intolerable anymore. Two more tools digests. And a farming book and some food. Alright, let's go do the buried supplies now that I have that extra rank of minor 69 to make it nicer to do. That was a fun little detour. Here we are. Start the thing. Now, if you look up in the top right there, you'll have a distance. If you go outside of 25 meters away from the supplies, you fail the quest. So try not to do that if you don't want to fail the quest. Let me put that muzzle brake on my pipe machine gun. What it does is reduces your recoil. Recoil's not too bad, but also putting any attachment on any weapon or tool increases its damage by 10%, so it's usually worth it. That's why I also have a single shot mod on my already single shot pistol to get extra damage. And while I'm digging here, I could even go to modify my axe. Got my shovel, you see it's got 38 block damage. Put the woodcutter on there, and now it's 42. Just remember when I actually want to cut down a tree, I should put it back on the axe. And we want to get through to the easy to dig terrain here 
sooner because it has less health so you can break it quicker. Yeah, we can do this in what, three hits? That's not terrible. And I've got so much minor 69er that the stamina use of the shovel means I can pretty much infinitely just dig like this. See, it won't go below like 114. Pretty useful. This, having a few points in minor 69er makes buried supplies a lot more bearable. But I normally don't have minor 69er in my build, so I normally don't do them. So when the, the thing closes, you've got chance for zombies to spawn. It's a low chance on tier 1s. I got very unlucky there. You can see that if you were playing on very high zombie run speeds though, and you were just out here in a field, it could be really troublesome. <laughs> Which is another reason you might not see people doing these on like Insane Nightmare because you have to build pillars and climb up and fight for ages. Blech. Oh, a lot of effort when you could just go and do a fetch job, you know? A real last resort, as it were. Oh, I'm thirsty. Wonderful. That's going to make things more difficult because now I have a stamina penalty, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be okay. At least I'm getting a bunch of clay from this. Where's the radius, by the way? Probably want to dig behind where I was because... Doesn't seem like it's going to be on that side. And that time when the radius shrunk, no zombie spawned, because it is only a chance for it to happen. Where the hell's this damn box? Oh, there it is. Oh, before we pick it up, let's deal with the first wave of zombies, because when you do pick it up, you're going to have to kill more of them. We don't want to deal with two waves at the same time. Got no stamina, cause water. Let's just walk around this light attacker. I'm going to let my stamina regenerate, and then I'll get the end loot thing here. Now, you don't have to kill these ones, so we can just grab this, eat my can of stock, and then run. And they're not going to be able to keep up with me on this run speed, so it doesn't matter. So, even with all my waffling and having to do buried supplies and getting no fetches, we got that done very quickly. I see no reason a new player couldn't do this in a day as well. It just might be, you know, closer to midnight when you do it. Yeah, right, so Wrecked is giving me pipe bombs, I will take them. And for our end loop here, for the, the full tier 1 complete, you get a guaranteed bicycle. I think the, the gatherer here is also a useful thing that you can always get. The forge is not every time. I'm not going to do this though, because we can get a forge very easily. The thing that is a real pain in the ass to get because you need a workbench to craft the parts for it, you need to find 10 vehicle books. Unless you're really focused on vehicles, and you're only really going to be focused on vehicles straight away if you're on a multiplayer server, this is the easiest way to just get a vehicle for something you should be doing anyway. So we're going to take that. Got any special jobs? He'll tell me about where Trader Jen is to the west. Up, got to complete a quest here, problem. redeem that for some XP, we got another level, let's put another point in Minor 69er. We might as well, because we want to get those tool digests out here as soon as possible, so let's head outside real quick. And switch over to the bicycle here. Place this with your power attack button. And if we hold E on it, we get a bunch of options. You can honk the horn, you can pick it back up, you can put a code on it for multiplayer, you can unlock it so that anybody on the server can use it, and you can open it to see the stats like health, speed, noise, all that kind of thing. And you can drive it, but you can just press E to get on it quickly. But there is also hold E and go to the storage, and you've got nine more inventory slots. So for example, if I wanted to just do that, and there we go, just nine more inventory slots. And now my encumbrance and my movement speed don't matter. So I can wear armor, I can be fully over encumbered, and I can get around at this speed. You can use shift or your sprint button to go faster. But you can move very quickly on a bicycle compared to just running. And you can do it without actually using any stamina. There's an exploit you can use that I'm not going to tell you about because I don't even know if it's still in the game. But otherwise, you can just cycle around at this pace and it is faster than sprinting and you'll use no stamina at all. Which is very good if you're trying to conserve food and water because food and water are spent replenishing stamina. That's how the game basically does it. Plus a little bit of like a time modifier is over time they're obviously going to go down naturally. But exerting yourself makes them go down faster. So I don't have time to go two kilometers before nightfall and the trader won't be open until 4am anyway. So we can leave that for another time. Going over to Trader Gen would get me access to another trader which would be nice but more importantly 
it would get me access to another biome where the loot is better but the POIs are harder and that's a real reason to consider going out there. If you want more of a challenge and you want slightly better loot, going to Trader Gen will allow you to do that because she is in a burned biome which is slightly harder than the forest. Usually though, if you want the really good stuff, wait until the snow biome in the wasteland because they have big modifiers and much harder zombies than the burned biome. It's barely an increase in the burned biome. You won't feel it at level 10 for example, but it's, it's still something you could consider. It will be slightly harder, but the loot will not be better yet. And I'm thirsty. I do actually have water by the way. It's not that I'm unable to keep on top of water, it's that I keep forgetting to take it out of my campfire. <laughs> That's the only problem. For example, here's 12. I just forget to grab it. And then, have I got any other murky ward in here? Yeah, I got eight. Let's put that on here. Just in case I haven't showed how to cook water, by the way. Cooking pot, campfire, fuel, click it, click cook. There you go. I shift clicked it to get it to automatically go to the max. And I'm going to drink a couple of glasses of this. I'm going to make a library box so that I don't have to fill all my... That's, you can actually find a library box, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to make a box called library so that I can have a box with all my magazines in it so they're not clogging up all my extra stuff. And we can easily track... For example, that I have six tool digests, and if we had the nerdy armor, we could be like, well, that's probably going to be roughly nine tool digests, actually. Here's some more stuff there. I've got seven pipe bombs. That's a solid little supply for Horde Knight that'll be helpful. Shotguns and vehicles. So, one thing we should probably do is get a forge. You might not need one, but... It's just about, you know, pride. You should get a forge and be like, yeah, I got a forge. So you need cobblestone, wooden logs, leather, duct tape, and pipes. And you probably should know how to get all of those from watching the series so far, but I'll quickly go over how you can find some more right now if you need it. And I might need to find a couple of things myself. I don't know if I've got the leather, for example. Oh, no, I do. Um, We need a little bit more stuff. Stone, uh, cobblestone, sorry. Oh, no, we don't. We're good. Cool. And then to make a log, that is just wood turned into a log in your inventory. I don't know why they do that, rather than just making it cost 10 wood. But there you go. Uh, so if you need cobblestone, you find stone and clay. And you find clay in the ground, and the tutorial tells you how to find stone. And then you just craft it here, like that. There's some cobblestone. Leather, you kill animals. You find office chairs and then you scrap them in your inventory. Remember, I showed you how to do that. You select the thing, you press S, you get some materials back. Office chairs are really good for that. You can press E on them and pick them up, and you'll get, like, five leather. Duct tape is glue plus cloth. And if you have absolutely no glue, go to your campfire and combine bones and water. And bones come from dead animals again, or from those road kills that you might see. Is, is there any... I don't think you can see any outside my house because I've scooped them all up. Pipes. Use your stone axe on toilets, or if you have a wrench, you'll you'll find pipes. Just scrap everything. You'll find pipes. And if you're ever really unsure, there are actually tutorials in here that'll tell you how to get short iron pipes. Polymers. Leather. Cobblestone rocks, which you can harvest from the pallets, as it says, with a shovel. Probably easier to just dig them. Um, if you need a small amount. So let's craft my forge. And the forge is an item, or a block I should say, which, like the campfire, produces heat and will attract screamers. So be cautious about how many you build and how much you have them on, if that makes sense. I've got a grill in here. I should put that in my campfire. Oh, and I have customized fittings. These are going to go on my gloves. While I don't care about the speed... This will just make me get around a little bit faster when I'm not in combat and I'm not cycling. Okay, Forge is done. And I know a lot of new players have a real hard time working the Forge, so I will do a quick little tutorial on that. Let's redeem that. So the way the Forge works is kind of strange. You're going to need a fuel source. I'm just going to put some frames in because it's less clicking. There's, there's 15 minutes of fuel. And you need to craft things from here. And you'll be like, okay, I want to make forged iron. I have iron, I have clay. What's the problem? Well, foraging requires a process called smelting. And that's over here. You need to put the iron in and the clay in and then turn on the fuel. That's going to slowly 
smelt into the forge and it'll add up here as you can see there's like six iron as it goes and the clay is doing it as well one clay here equals five clay here one iron here equals one iron here so keep that in mind and there you go you can make a forged iron and you can use that for example if you wanted to make a baseball bat that requires iron i'm gonna wait until i've got a higher level one though so what i'm gonna do is just leave this to smelt in the background and it's gonna slowly gather up enough clay and iron for me to make some more forged iron which i can actually make use of the rest of the materials I will just throw back in the container and put my, uh, this thing in here again. Oh, I do have a grill in there, never mind that, okay. Also, I think I just put away my iron bolts. Remember to lock that inventory slot. So the next thing you'll need is a workbench. This is used to craft all the things you can't craft in your inventory, and you will notice you'll need 100 nails and 25 forged iron and a whopping 20 mechanical parts. So for forged iron and nails, your forge can do that nails are here forged irons here for 20 mechanical parts though you're gonna have to either get very lucky with wood or you're going to have to find an engine and scrap it or you can build a wrench and you can much more reliably get yourself access to um what are they called mechanical parts mechanical parts are used in crafting a wrench of course and to get a wrench you need salvage tools for and as you can see i'm at two so i just have to wait until i get lucky enough to find those two other things for this to really pick up but that's fine anyway because i don't have enough workstations books to craft the workbench anyway but what i do have is the ability to make a do collector so let's do that i just said do so many times so if you're ever confused about what you want to craft type it into the search bar and track it it will replace your quest on the top right here so we need four short iron pipes already explained how to get those so no worry there we need four duct tape there's one and here's three glue and if i've got the cloth we can just make duct tape so if we go for three duct tape there and then scrap polymers which i have 123 of again the quest here will show you how to find scrap polymers the game recommends water barrels, window blinds, and trash. Those are decent enough options. Uh, tires are a very good option as well if you hit them with your stone axe. And wrenching stuff will usually net you polymers just as you go because so many things have it in them as it is. And looting, of course, you'll just find them. So if we craft a do collector, and that'll take 30 seconds. My forge is ticking along. We'll craft out some more forged iron there. You'll see three slots up here, by the way. The first slot is for bellows. Bellows will make the forge do the smelting faster. Second slot is for the anvil, and that makes it do the crafting faster. And the third slot is for the crucible, which allows you to craft steel, which is a higher level version of forged iron, basically, which is used in late game recipes. There we go, the dew collector is done. I'm going to build some extra building blocks here, maybe like 20 of them. And we're going to step outside for a moment. It is night time, but I do have a firearm, so I'll probably be able to defend myself. A few thousand hours should save me there. And what the dew collector does is slowly gather you water. And that's useful because there's not any way to collect water manually in the game anymore because the devs hate you that is a fundamental lesson you must learn about this game the devs genuinely do hate you so what i'm gonna do is build a little pillar here i'm just gonna do something like this and then make it a three by three now this is this probably seems initially deranged but hear me out uh, repair that one in the middle because you're not gonna have access to it in a second do this and then i'm going to upgrade them all to wood now this is ugly and that's because this is just an early game construct but the reason we're doing this is the do collector for some reason despite being a barrel and a tarp and a funnel that collects water from the air it generates heat and activity that attract screamers and they will attack your do collector and zombies as they walk past while they're not particularly attracted to things like do collectors, they might just decide they want to, and then your do collector will be dead while you're not even at your base, and that would suck. So keeping it elevated is a good choice. Just break down my windows here. This is going to be a little door to my do collector area here. And then 
you can see it needs a 3x3 three three space. Place that, make sure it has air above it, because it doesn't work without the sky, despite the fact that it's not a rain collector, it's distinctly not a rain collector. They make that very clear. Uh, it needs sky access. So here you'll see three bars. These are slowly filling up with murky water. And you'll also see three tool slots here. These are very important and very powerful. But come back in a day and this will be filled with three glass jars of murky water. This tool here will increase the speed of generation. And what that will do is basically every 12 hours it'll fill up. This tool here is the tarp, and this will increase the amount of water it gets every time. So this can increase the speed by 50%. This increases the quality by 50%. No, wait, would it be 100%? Yeah, it'd be 100%. If you combine these two together, you get a shitload of water, and you'll basically get um, 6 water every 12 hours, or 12 water every day. If you come back and empty it, because they don't stack. You have to come and take out the things from each slot every time. It only fills up to these three slots, and this tarp here makes it so it can stack to two, so you'll have six maximum in each do collector at a time. So come back every 12 hours and empty your do collectors if you really are hurting for water. This final one here is the water filter, and that changes it from murky water to boiled purified water that you can go straight into using for water or glue. That's a really useful one because it saves you that middle step of having to boil all your water, which takes ages. It's like a minute per bottle. You know, if you do the maths there as one do collector without a gatherer and a tarp, you get 12 water a day and it's a minute to boil each water. You're going to have to make sure your campfire is going at least 12 minutes a day to, to boil just one do collector's worth of water. Obviously, you could split that across however many campfires but you increase the risk of screamers by increasing the heat so the the water filter is just a really nice quality of life thing to save you having to go at the campfire but it's like eight thousand dukes and you can see my whole progress so far i have four thousand and i've been buying almost nothing uh, these gatherers and tarps are pretty much only bought from the trader same with the water filter uh, but you saw at the tier one complete i did get the gatherer as an option so if you do want that you could do that instead of the bicycle. I think the bicycle is just the best option overall though. So yeah, this is a very important tool for your survival because your character is too stupid to find like a box to put some water in to transport it back to their base. So yeah, and they eat the box the water is already in whenever they uh, drink it, of course. So it's just the reality of the game that you have to deal with. The next thing we will get is a workbench. And then I will be holding on to all of my workstation books until I have enough to get the Crucible in one go. Because you'll see there on the thing it says lockpicking boosts up to crafting level 15. And we're going to get in some real weeds here, so bear with me. But basically the lockpicking perk only boosts the workstation's skill book. That's the only thing it boosts, but it only goes up to 15 because the idea is... Once you're at 15, you no longer have to unlock lockpicks, so they get rid of the loot boost. But you can take advantage of that by just waiting until you have all the books already and staying under 15 the whole time. Now, you might just say, why not just go for advanced engineering? And advanced engineering has five ranks. I mean, that sounds better. But the problem with advanced engineering is kind of like the minor 69er perk where it just absolutely floods your loot table with those tools digests advanced engineering would be wonderful if it flooded your loot tables with just forge heads but it actually boosts a bunch of different skills it boosts handy land and you do not need to be prioritizing nail guns on day one right your axe will do for repairing early on it also boosts electrician which is completely valueless until level 25 of it. And you're not going to need that in like the first couple of weeks. You don't need electricity. That's a late game thing. It's, it's barely even needed late game. You definitely don't want to be wasting valuable loot on getting these fucking books. And the same is exactly true of traps. You're not going to get anything from them until 25. And then you're just sitting waiting to unlock SMG auto turrets that you're not going to be able to build until much later on in the game. And then it boosts your forge ahead as well. So of the two, if you actually want forge aheads and you want them quickly, lockpicking is better. But you have to abide by the silly little workaround of keeping your lock or keeping your 
workstation skill below 15. It's a completely pointless change because it's not difficult to just hold on to your books until you have enough of them. So that's all I'm going to cover for today's episode. That was a lot of theory at the end about books and the complexities of the Do Collector. Hopefully that's of value to you. Feel free to come back to the video and just stare at that section for hours until you figure out everything because it's absolute fucking nonsense. And uh, yeah, that's just this game. My members and patrons get early access to new videos when I can provide it. And if you're looking for a 7 days to die server, why not use the link in the description with level up posting and I'll make a commission if you do that. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.